Earth, an island ecosystem with finite resources, suspended in an infinite universe. The connection between this universe and life is water, the birthplace of all life. Water creates island ecosystems. It protects them and at the same time makes them fragile. Just 60 miles from Los Angeles, California is the Channel Islands National Marine Sanctuary. 1,500 square miles of protected Pacific Ocean surrounding the Channel Islands National Park. Five unique islands, Santa Barbara, Anacapa, Santa Cruz, Santa Rosa, San Miguel, and the waters surrounding them create one of the most unique island ecosystems in North America. The biological diversity found here is nothing short of amazing. This special place holds secrets of science, riddles of nature and the voices of ancestors. Visitors come here seeking solace knowledge, sustenance, and adventure. They harvest the bountiful resources for food. Much of the past remains unchanged in the present. Humans rely on consumption for survival and will always be part of this ecosystem. The evolved mind thrives on curiosity, thought, and ritual. These things have all carried forward from a time before and will be passed on. The value in this passing is measured by the health of this special place and all its ecosystems. My people, the Chumash, were born here. We were the original caretakers of these islands. We thrived because of the bountiful resources. These resources allowed us to build a strong, highly developed society. Our history is carried down through song, dance, and storytelling. Traditions that continue today. This is an old time story, the Rainbow Bridge story. Long, long ago, our people lived only on the islands. The islands became very crowded, and this was not healthy for the people or for the islands. Creator told the people some must move to the mainland and made them a rainbow bridge to cross over from the islands. 
Creator warned them, do not look down as you cross the bridge or you will fall. But some looked down and fell into the sea. Not wanting the fallen ones to perish, Creator transformed them into dolphins so they could live a good life in the sea forever. Our connection to the sea is also forever. All of our existence is connected to the sea. Our survival depends on its well-being and careful stewardship of its resources. The place where the land connects with the sea is a place of both turmoil and quiet reflections that lead into the water where the kelp forest begins. This wilderness beneath the sea is like a rainforest, dappled sunlight passing through the kelp illuminates a world below like no other on Earth. Here in the sanctuary, cold water currents from the north collide with warm currents from the south. This mixing allows a broad diversity of species to exist in a small geographical area. The kelp forest supports over 1,000 different plants and animals. It is one of the most productive ecosystems on the planet. The giant kelp is found as deep as 100 feet and grows an astonishing two feet a day. These massive undersea forests provide great habitat for animals, all the way from the surface to the rocky reef below. As we move through the water, we encounter schools of swimmers. Massive schools of bait fish band together for protection to confuse predators. Like the harbor seal. Fish like this toothy lean cod stay in the rocky crevices, only venturing up to feed on the smaller fish. The torpedo ray glides through the kelp looking for prey. It stuns fish by discharging a strong electric shock. Bat rays work the bottom, looking for clams that they can crush with their powerful jaws. Spitting out the shell and feasting on the tasty morsel within. These sand areas around the kelp forest are hard places for large animals to hide. But some, like this halibut, are perfectly adapted. Being flat, it remains unseen until it moves. The angel shark can lay motionless undetected in the sand for days until an unsuspecting fish swims by. Then it explodes out of the sand to feed. The kelp forest is a dynamic environment that changes seasonally and from year to year.
to understand if a change is part of a normal process or caused by something out of balance, scientists monitor kelp forests systematically over time. They compare the health of marine protected areas where fishing is not allowed to the areas that remain open to fishing. Dr. Jennifer Cassell and her team from the University of California at Santa Barbara are one of the groups that do the monitoring. We have a lot of historical records that show that the kelp forests in the Channel Islands ecosystems were much healthier years and years ago than they are now. And we'd like to find ways to move these ecosystems back to the way they once were. Things like marine protected areas will really help in this regard. Marine protected areas restore ecosystems to their natural state, and we think that healthier ecosystems are more resilient to climate change. We all know this is hugely important as we face climatic changes. We hope that the data we're collecting here on the marine protected areas in the Channel Islands will help us better understand how they work here and elsewhere. What I'd really love to see is these kelp forests restored to the way they were 50 or even 100 years ago. One fish that disappeared from the kelp forest fished to the very edge of extinction is the giant sea bass. These fish are now making a slow comeback. They grow and reproduce very slowly. They are recovering because they have been protected for over 30 years. Marine protected areas and sustainable fishing practices by local fishermen are both tools used to help keep these ecosystems intact. As we move along the floor of the forest, we enter the area known as the Rocky Reef. Here, invertebrates colonize every available surface. Life is so dense it forms a virtual living carpet. This well-armored sheep crab forages not only through the kelp forest, but out on the surrounding sand areas and into the adjacent eelgrass. Eelgrass beds are rare here, found in calm, soft bottom areas. They serve as nurseries for young fish and provide habitat for many others. Down inside the grass, there is another forest with its own set of very strange occupants. This pike blenny burrows in sand under the roots of the eelgrass. It is giving a display to attract a mate. Biologists keep track of the animals and plants here as well. They look for changes in the eelgrass that might indicate a change in the environment. The Channel Islands are a deceptive paradise. Located just a few dozen miles off of our coastline, they seem so far away from all of the human pollution and activities that we see along the mainland. However, they're connected to our mainland by water. So what goes into the water along the mainland can affect what we see at the islands. Fish that seabirds feed on are a link between the land and the sea. Years ago, millions of pounds of DDT, a pesticide, 
flowed into the ocean from industrial manufacturing on the mainland. It accumulated in the fish, which were the primary food source for the California brown pelican. The DDT caused the pelicans to lay thin-shelled eggs, which were crushed during the incubation, causing the pelican population to plummet. As a result, these birds were one of the first animals to be placed on the endangered species list. With the DDT production stopped in the 1970s, the pelicans have made a tremendous comeback and their populations are once again thriving. Pollution is not the only thing that has impacted seabirds in the islands. They have had to overcome other human-induced problems in order to survive. On a foggy night in December of 1853, a paddle-wheeled steamer, the Winfield Scott, hit a rocky reef off Anacapa Island. The ship sank, leaving behind one of the many historic shipwrecks protected by the sanctuary and the park. It also left something else, black rats. The rats swam ashore and became permanent residents surviving by preying on nesting seabirds and their eggs. A small seabird, the Xanthus merlet, was decimated by the rats. The birds are now banded with identifying numbers to keep track of the population size. Five, seven, five. During the breeding season, Trained biologists comb the fragile cliffs and sea caves to count nests and chicks. Evolutionarily and biologically, the most important part of a seabird's life is the breeding cycle. For Xanthus merlets, that occurs in the waters around the Channel Islands National Marine Sanctuary. Back over here to your left, you can see the tag. Mm -hmm. Two other sites right there. About 90% of the California population breed in and feed in the waters around these islands. The health of these islands and the waters around them are paramount to a viable population of merlets. With the rats now removed from Anacapa Island, scientists are hopeful that the merlets will recover. Maintaining balance in an island ecosystem is a difficult process, but critical to its survival. The Northern Channel Islands are part of a ridge that rises up out of the deep ocean. Nutrient-laden waters are pushed into this ridge and then up to the surface, feeding abundant populations of plankton. These tiny plants and animals, barely visible to the naked eye when viewed under a microscope, look like creatures from another world. Krill, a small shrimp-like crustacean, feed on the plankton. They form dense swarms so thick they can block out the sun. Schooling fish gorge themselves on this banquet. Pelicans plunge into the dense schools of fish, their bodies protected from the impact of the water by air sacs buried just beneath the surface of their skin. Large groups of dolphins and sea lions feed on the massive food source as well. Whales are here too. One third of the world's species of whales and dolphins are found in the sanctuary waters. The abundant food helps support healthy populations of animals here in the mid-channel and throughout the whole island ecosystem. But there are threats. Each year, thousands of cargo ships transit this channel, headed in and out of one of the busiest ports in the world. Los Angeles, 
and the port of Long Beach. This traffic puts whales and ships at risk for collision. Biologist John Kalambokitas studies whales to understand how they react when a ship is nearby. He attaches a suction cup tag to the backs of whales. The tag carries an instrument that records how long a whale is on the surface, how long and how deep it dives. It also records whale vocalizations and all the sounds in the water, including passing ships. By increasing our understanding of whale activities and working with the shipping industry, we hope to find ways to avoid collisions. has this real interest in whales and a perception that we know so much about them, when the reality is we actually know a lot less than people think we do. And our passion for whales needs to be a representation of the marine environment and the protections that we put in for keeping the marine environment healthy, and that's what the whales are going to require to be out there. Whales can easily dive to the depths of the sanctuary. But for us to study these remote deep ocean areas requires specialized equipment. Dr. Milton Love is one of the lucky people that gets to visit this hidden wilderness. I love using manned submersibles. It's the highlight of my career. And when you're down 600 feet, 800 feet, 1,000 feet, and you know that no one else has been here before, it's a thrill every single time. Life forms that live below the reaches of sunlight are little understood and very fragile. Unlocking the secrets held in these depths can bring us discoveries beyond our wildest imaginations. Animals like this vampire squid, a viper fish, or this bizarre jelly, spur our desire to explore and learn. Barriers of pressure and darkness are not enough to protect this fragile frontier. Only we can do that. Squid that inhabit these depths are a food source for elephant seals and sea lions. To reach this prey, both animals must have extraordinary diving abilities. Elephant seals visit the Channel Islands two times a year, once to mate and have their young, and again to molt. Twice they leave on a long migration that takes them thousands of miles from the islands to feeding areas in the North Pacific. Sea lions, on the other hand, are full-time residents. They live and breed in the islands year-round. Dr. Sharon Maline and Tony Orr are two marine mammal scientists that spend a large part of their lives on San Miguel Island studying sea lions. The California Channel Islands are the primary breeding sites for California sea lions in the world. California sea lions are sensitive to even short-term changes in their environment. Because they are a coastal animal, they feed on the same things humans feed on. 
they inhabit the same waters that we inhabit as a species. And so we start seeing them responding to a change in their environment, then we need to start looking at our own, how that might actually translate into a human effect as well. Humans have had a connection with this corner of the universe for thousands of years. And that will never change. Our people continue to practice cultural traditions. We share with all people our Rainbow Bridge story, illustrating the finite limits of resources and the need for preservation. This island ecosystem is a small reflection of Earth. What we see in this reflection can be an indicator for the whole planet. Its balance is greatly affected by people. We meet the future with our efforts to restore and protect both the cultural and natural resources. Through science, we look for paths to correct our past mistakes and ways to prevent future ones. Through education, we link islands of knowledge from many places and people to stimulate thought and action. We hope it will bring appreciation, respect, and understanding for a place where nature is bountiful, but resources become limited with too much demand. All of us must continue to honor our responsibilities as caretakers. We must take seriously our obligation to the future. This effort will be measured by what we leave to the generations that follow us. You should keep the ocean healthy because then all the creatures will be healthy. There are so many amazing things to learn about the ocean. The underwater world is so beautiful. Listen to these voices and remember, as the time before us and the present, the time that comes after us is a gift from the universe. The condition in which we leave this special place is our gift to the children. Planet.